buzz is electric. Everyone is supercharged with intensity. Definitely worth it. This event is amazing. Everyone's excited, thinking positively, affirming everyone. You just finished getting on your goals and everything is set. You can do anything. You know you can. You bought the signs. You bought the I can and I will signs. This event is amazing. And then you go home and you notice that that enthusiasm starts to drop. Where is that I can and I will? I got the sign. I think I'm going to look for a place to hang it. I think I'm going to go and hang it on this wall over here where I can see it all the time. Because I know mindset's it. I know if I just can get my mindset right, then I can crush my goals. I can build my business. I can have the relationships I want. Who hasn't said that before? I just got to get my mindset right and I can have what I want. We've all said it. Problem is, mindset's a different, a distant third. Mindset follows our emotional state. Mindset mastery is all about emotional mastery. When we're thinking about how to have a mindset that moves us forward, we always go back to tactics and strategies that are going to move us forward. And we get so wrapped up in the tactics and strategies, don't we? We think that those are going to move us forward. I can get a sign. I can get a mantra. You know what? I'm going to go and get that book off my shelf, my favorite mindset book that just gets me in the right mood. Oh, there's that mood thing again. I'm talking about getting in a mood. So what is this mood that we're getting into to have the right mindset? Why is everybody so focused on mindset and they're not thinking about how emotions actually drive mindset? Now, I talk about this all the time. I talk about almost everything I do is that emotions drive mindset. See, so many gurus out there, so many well meaning coaches out there talk about mindset. And if we can just make our mindset stronger, we're good. So I was in the recovery community for years, helping people learn how to get off drugs and alcohol and things like that. And there was two groups of people. One group was mindset. And if they could just make the steps work, steps the program, there's all kinds of different 12-step programs out there. And if I could just make those steps work in my life, my life will get better. And they spend hours and hours and hours grinding it, doing these steps better than anybody, and their life goes nowhere. They just sit and spin. They're wasting their time. They get themselves so down and so frustrated because things aren't changing in their life. Why do you think that is? They're doing all the right things. They're taking all the action. They're spending hours working on everything that's supposed to be happening, but it just doesn't work. It doesn't work well. Sometimes it works a little bit and then they fall back down. So why is this happening? What is this phenomenon all about? Then the other group, they seem to just be taking it easy. They get in that program and they do the steps, but everything just seems to fall in place. They're not grinding. They're taking it easy. They're having a good time. They seem to enjoy everything they're doing. So how is it some people can enjoy what they're doing and just having a great time moving forward and everything seems to click? And then the other group, no matter how hard they grind, they can't do it, but they're working on their mindset. They're talking mindset. All of these words are spitting out the right words, but nothing is happening. What the hell is going on? We've all seen it. Many of us have experienced it. I'm doing the right things and nothing is happening. I go to all these trainings. I get the signs. I put them up and nothing happens. I go to work every day. I put the plan together and nothing happens. What the hell am I doing wrong? Why the hell is things not happening for me? Who's ever had that question in their mind? Is Why is it not working for me? I go to all these trainings. 
I spend time, I spend hours trying to make this stuff work. What am I doing wrong? I work on my mindset constantly. And in fact, I feel discouraged. I feel powerless. I feel completely empty. I'm working on my mindset and nothing happens. My business is exactly the same it was a year ago. In fact, it isn't, it, it isn't growing at all. My love life, my relationships, same. Can't seem to make it work. Why not? What am I doing wrong? I see all these people having success. Why don't I? It's driving me crazy. I know. I got to get a new mindset book. I got to attend another training. <laughs> get another training. Get another mindset book. I'm going to read this one. I must have missed something. I'm going to double down. I'm going to buy three books. Stephen Covey, you know, hey, highly effective people, seven habits. Whoa. I'm going to get friggin' think and grow rich. You know what? I've listened to it 12 times. It hasn't changed a damn thing. What am I doing wrong? And it's because mindset's a distant third. We have an emotion set and an action set that creates the mindset. Most people don't take the right action at the right time. And the right action is to look inside, identify the emotions that are off and deal with those first. See what's going on with us and how our life is not working because it's our emotions that are getting in the way. It's trash on the track. At Generator Coaching, we talk about getting the trash off the track so you can go like a bullet train down the rails. And there's more than one rail on a train. There's mindset track and emotion track. And to get the action set, you have to have the emotion set. And then the mindset shows up. Mindset is all behavior. It's what we do. Emotion set is how we're feeling about it. And if we have a fear, if we have a feeling of powerlessness, if we feel discouraged, if we feel disappointed, and we don't identify that stuff, that stuff is what's running our track. That stuff is running the car on the track. And so we walk around disappointed, pretending that we're happy. We walk around deflated, pretending that everything's okay. And then we show up and everybody sees the pretend. Everybody sees us pretending to be okay, pretending to try to run a business, pretending to do all of these things, and nothing's happening because they can see what we're not looking at. We're pretending we don't have that stuff. We have a big blind spot that we created because we're pretending, because we're doing what those books says, but we didn't get clear first. We didn't clear the trash off the track. We're just pretending it's not there. How many have ever had something going on in their life that they're not talking about, but it's really weighing on them heavy? And then you try to do your job. Hold back the tears, hold back the emotion. Oh, don't let anybody see it. It's not a good way to go into business. It's not a good way to do your, do your job. It's not a good way to have a relationship to hide that shit. We got to get rid of that stuff to have a, a clear life, to have clear thinking. On a scale of one to five, would you give yourself a five on achieving what you want in life? If your answer is anything less than a five, right now, I have something awesome for you. Achieving your goals and living your life out of five isn't easy. Most people aren't prepared to focus, stay disciplined, and do the everyday work that is necessary to achieve amazing results. But since you're watching this, then I'm guessing that you're not one of those people. And this is an opportunity that will change your life. give to get is a global program that brings together world-class coaching and combines it with empowering masterminds and networking opportunities. We provide five-star guidance for the price of a cup of coffee a day. To find out more, click on the link in the description of this coaching session. How many people have ever tried to think really good when they're pissed? <laughs> the only thing I can think about when I'm upset is getting that guy or the girl. I'll be nicer when I'm getting the girl, but I'm going to get her. And the whole thing is, no matter what happens, we are not using our mind. We are plotting revenge. Or we're figuring out how to get the hell out of there quick. One of the two. We're either treacherous or we're running away. When we're upset. 
because we're feeling powerless, we get upset and we try to figure things out. We try to make things happen. We get frustrated, angry, whatever. But really what's going on, we're feeling powerless because we don't have an answer, but we're so mad we can't talk about what's going on. And we're lying to ourselves saying that we'll figure it out instead of actually asking for help. How many people knew we needed help? How many people out there know you need help with something and don't ask for it? You know, I'll figure it out. I'll get a new book. It'll be okay. I'll figure out this relationship someday. Someday doesn't come. Someday turns into the next day, the next day, the next day, and we're the same place we were 365 days ago. More discouraged. More disappointed. Hopeful that it's going to change with his next book. Hopeful this next event is going to help us in some way. Maybe this next person I meet will fix it. Yeah, and maybe Santa Claus is going to bring me the answer too. It just doesn't happen. We have to take the right action at the right time. And most of the time, the right action is to step back and look at ourselves. Most of the time is to quit doing what you've always done. Because when we keep doing what we've always done, we get the results we've always gotten. This is not a new concept. In fact, this concept was out way, way before any of us were born. I've read it in books from 1937, from 1927. This concept has been around. We still do it. Talk about doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. We all do this. But doing something feels much more better than stepping back and looking at ourselves. Because our head tells us one lie that is worse than any lie I've ever heard of. And the lie is this. Don't look inside. You won't like what you see. I don't, wanna, don't talk about it. They won't get it. Don't think about it. You can't fix that. Unless you do this. Read this book. This will fix it. And so we go around with Band-Aids. We all just imagine a freaking big old box full of band-aids and no matter what we do we just stick more and more band-aids on us walking around with band-aids all over us thinking that there's some problem but the whole world sees there's no real problem you're just not honest with yourself see the whole thing that mindset does for us we don't realize when we're only focused on mindset is we're lying to ourselves because it's not a mindset issue it's an emotion set issue and it's an action set issue. Mindset's a different, thir distant third. Mindset only follows getting your emotions aligned. I want you to think about and imagine a, a, a string of dominoes. If one goes down, they all get triggered. That's what happens with our emotions. No matter how much you think about wanting to do this thing, if the emotion gets triggered, they all go down. And so you're all going down like this while you're trying to do this. You can't not go two ways. You get derailed. We got to get emotional alignment. We got to align our mind through our emotions. Anybody out here ever had like a good cry after some emotional thing? And then by the time you're done crying, your mind is quiet. There's no real thinking anymore. It's just like, okay. It's just even. What if you could have that balanced evenness all the time? How clearly do you think you could think? Funny statement. How clearly do you think you could take action when you don't have all that noise in your head about what might happen or what I could do or what didn't work? What if there was a way to erase your mind so you could move forward fast, just taking action after action after action? See, the thing I do with people is I forget about the mindset and I get the emotion set right. Because when I find that I help people get their emotion set, and their action set in order, their mindset falls into line and they're able to move forward fast. I've made people millions of dollars. 
millions of dollars helping them to just get the trash off the track so they can build their business the way they want to, so they can build their life the way they want to, so they can have the relationship they want to. I started helping this one person uh, with their daughter, trying to get their daughter back into school. This is 19, no, I'm sorry, it was 2011, 2012, 2012. She came in, her daughter wouldn't go to school. I don't know what's going on. I'm so afraid that she's going to do this and that. She's all messed up. She's got stomach problems and everything. I started working with him. Within two months, the kid was going back to school. And that wasn't the real problem. The problem was her and her husband weren't getting along. And then she brought her uh, husband in. And her husband started uh, talking about how he didn't have a relationship with the daughter. And that all of his employees hated him. And his wife hated him. And everybody was against him. We started helping him to align his emotion set and his wife came back and his daughter and him have a great relationship now. In fact, his daughter works in the company. The company went from under $1 million to $4 million company now. They all have great relationships and he just continues to teach what I taught him seven years ago to all of his employees as they come in. He has me come in and do trainings every so often. Because the stuff that I do is getting their emotional trash off the track. Because mindset isn't an issue. I bet there's plenty of books out there that each one of you people on this call have read and even can, as soon as I start reading the page, you can go, oh yeah, I've heard that. And then you can recite the rest of it because you read the damn stuff. But it hasn't changed anything. One thing I can prove without a doubt is mindset doesn't change much. It changes mindset. So much mindset training, and all you do is change your mind, but it does not change your situation. You have to have an emotion set and an action set to change your mindset. So when you're looking at what's going on in your life, do you have the changes in your life? Is your life, is your business, is your relationships the way you want them? If it's not, Mindset's not going to change it. Doesn't matter what happens. You can have as much positivity as you want. But all you're doing is lying to yourself unless you're getting the results you're looking for. It's a big problem in the community of positive thinking. A big problem in, you know, positive mental attitude. You can have positive mental attitude go right off cliff. Because we're not really looking at what we're looking at. The, the, the idea is Pollyanna. Everything's great. But what we really want to do is be in reality. We want to have our ego checked. We want to be paying attention to what's really going on. So many people are so focused on what they're going to get instead of what they have right now. And really, I've talked about it before, KPIs, key performance indicators, and seeing where I'm at, benchmarks. Am I at where I want to be? And we all do it. We all do it. I had the same conversation with my, my coach today. She's asking me what my projections are for the month. And I'm like, well, I think I want about 35,000. What for? Oh, I've done it before. She said, That's not a good answer. Oh, like, what do you want to buy? What do you want to pay off? How much are you putting away? Why are you doing this? Just to make money? That's not a good reason. And it's not. We want to understand why we want to do what we want to do. We want to understand the emotional reason. We want to create KPIs. We want to create benchmarks. But more than anything, we want to connect to the emotion of what's getting in our way when we're not getting what we want. And we want to really identify the action steps to move forward faster. So many people leave the right action out. They do the same action a lot. Oh my God, let's do more action. Okay, what are you going to do? Same thing I was doing. Well, what's that going to get you? The same thing I got. How many people want their life to be a little bit different? How many people could do, keep doing the same damn thing? Yeah. And the fact of the matter is we all do that to an extent. But to the extent that we keep doing the same thing, not taking new action, not doing something different, we get the same result. 
We want to take different action. And the reality is, until we decide that we're going to start doing something different with somebody else than we've already done before and really surrender to that new process, we're going to keep getting the old result. We have to have new and we have to take action on what's being suggested to get something new. How do you know if it's new or old? Well, number one, if you're afraid of it, it's probably going in the right direction. If it sounds very familiar, like you've already done it, it's probably old action. And if this is hitting you even a little bit, it's probably scaring you a little bit. A little nervous, a little concerning, but interesting. And so if you've already worked on your mindset, nothing has really changed the way you want it to. If you want something different in your life, I can help you make the change. I'm in boomerang give to get for one reason and one reason only, because I want to help people get the changes that they want. When Morrow asked me to do this, it's because he knew I changed people's lives. He knew I'm dedicated to it. I'm committed to it. And he asked me to be a coach in here because I help people change. The one thing you can look at my record, whether it was 20 years ago, or last week, the people I work with, their lives change. It's just a fact. It's an absolute fact their lives change. Most of them for the better. I'll say that. That was a joke. <laughs> Come on. Gee, a tough room. <laughs> the reality is, is if you want something different in your life, you got to do different things. And if you haven't taken action, if you haven't had a call with me and taken the action that I've suggested, then you haven't taken any other action than the same action you usually do. Most people who haven't had change, they have hesitation. They have procrastination. They have fear going on. They double down on what already hasn't worked. So I'll just do more of the same. Oh, yeah, that book you're talking about, I, I read it. I had a guy tell me two weeks ago. He said, you know, I've read this book over and over. And then when I read it with you, it says something completely different. It's because I see it from a different point of view. I look at things from a different point of view. And I do that because I have the training to actually help people move from one place to another and get the results they're looking for. I spent over $300,000 on my education just to help people move forward because I believe strongly in education. I believe strongly in implementation. I made those commitments to myself to help people because if I'm going to help people, I want to make sure I help them. It was my mission to help people make change in their life. I made the commitment in 1998, believe it or not, to help people change their life for the better. And I've been doing it every year since. And I'm in Boomerang Give to Get because when Moro talked about wanting to have a community where he helps people grow, I said, I can get into that. And me and Moro are very good friends. And so I said, I will help you. And so if you want change, if you find that you've been working on your mindset and you're not getting the results you want, then you reach out to me. We get on a call. I talk to you about where you're at, where you want to go. We put a plan together to get you there. And then you work with me. And then you have the changes that you're looking for. And sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They will materialize if you work for them. It doesn't matter who it is. I help people grow. As long as they take the action that I suggest, their lives change. It's just a fact. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. I help people get the results they want. I do it in this program. I do it in my own program. I work in a lot of different programs. Because I am obsessed with helping people have the change that they're looking for. So if that's you, reach out. Now, I committed to doing this today because Bruce reached out to me. I have to cut it short. I've got a little bit of time for questions if there's any questions. But I'm going to have to cut it short because I have another meeting right behind this. So any questions, 
any comments, love to hear from you. Thank you, Terry. Great session. And thank you for jumping in and helping us out too. Uh, so thank you very much. Terry, in your experience and all your, all your, I'll say 20 years of doing this, what are the biggest emotions that people get, what I'll say, blocked with or bogged down with that they can't, quote unquote, get the trash off the track? That's a great question. Um, uh, Peter Lencioni has a book uh, uh, called the, uh, what is it? Four Temptations of a CEO. Um, no, that's not it. He's got that one too, but it's, it's another one. I can't remember, but in- uh, I just function as a team? No, not that one. Um, it's, it's, I can see it on my wall because I've, I've got points of all of those books, but um, I, I love that you know who he is. Um, but uh, it, it's, shoot, I can't remember, but it's one of the fears of um, uh, people in, in power positions in their businesses. And one of the fears being embarrassed. Okay. And so I find, I, I firmly believe that people are, are so afraid of being embarrassed. Oh, it's called getting naked, that they won't get naked, that they won't show themselves, that right. they won't talk about what's not working. Right. And if you're not talking about what's working, it will never work. It's kind sure. of like my, my engine isn't working in my car. I'm not taking a mechanic. I don't want him to see that it doesn't work. Well, who's going to fix it? And so we end up not talking about those things that don't work. And so embarrassment is a big one. Another one for me is uh, the, the, the feeling of powerlessness. We feel powerless. And so instead of admitting we feel powerless and asking for help again, same thing, reaching outside of us, we go and we do um, the Christian religion talks about the Garden of Eden um, yeah. in the book of Genesis. Now, I'm not subscribing to any, but the, the, the story is an amazing story or, or um, parable of what we do as human beings. God says, don't eat the tree from the, don't eat the, uh, the fruit from that tree. tree. And so uh, I, I think of it as an apple. Yep. And so they go eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And ever since then, we're trying to figure out as soon as we eat that apple, as soon as we feel powerless because God says, don't eat the apple. Well, we can't eat the apple. I'm going to go eat that apple. We eat the apple. We take a bite and forever after we're banished from peace of mind. See, the Garden of Eden is peace of mind. In my story, Garden of Eden is peace of mind and the apple is figuring it out yourself. And what happens is we decide to eat the apple and figure it ourselves instead of be in peace, be in serenity being uh eaten and so we would rather try to figure it ourselves i'll go get another book i'll figure it out I'll, I'll map it out all by myself but if you're mapping it all by yourself well i got another book called quit taking your own bad advice and it talks all about how we inform ourselves of what to do and it just keeps this a loop of never moving us forward i don't want to get coaching i don't want to have a consultant come in I don't want my team to tell me what to do. I want to figure it out myself. And that goes into the temptations of a CEO. Right. We live in this world of not taking advice. We live in this world of trying to figure it ourselves. Or we take the advice from people we've decided can advise us because why? We wanted something from them. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. I don't have to do what they say. And a lot of times it's our relationships or they made us feel a certain way for a minute. And so we decided we want to go with them. But if somebody makes us feel uncomfortable, oh, I don't want to go work with them. They might make me feel more uncomfortable. Right. Well, growth is all about discomfort, not comfort. Growth is always on that fringe of fear. Exactly. Taking action is always scary. Shit. <laughs> I got into another coaching program because that's what I do. Um, and the, the ticket was extremely high ticket, high value, right? And I'm paying somewhere around three or $4,000 a month for this coaching. And uh, when I signed up for it, I was freaked out. 
And I told her, I am freaking out about this. And she's like, why? And I said, because I have to do more work. I have to surrender to you and I have to do what you tell me to. And I'm afraid I won't. I'm afraid that I can't. I'm afraid that you're going to find out that I'm not as good as I like to pretend to be. And she laughed and she said, man, nobody's ever that honest. Thank you. But it's the truth. We don't like to be vulnerable like that. Look, I don't know if I can do everything she asks me to, especially before I talk to her. Because the funny thing is, is the things that I think that she's going to tell me I have to do. When I, before I make the call to her, before I get on Zoom with her, oh, they're astronomically huge. When I'm in the conversation with her, it's one or two or three action items. Oh, that's easy. You can do that. It's so different when I actually talk to her. But when I talk to her in my head, it's ooh, scary. I can't do it. Because my head is telling me the story. My head is pretending to be her, and I listen to that. And she tells me what I'm doing wrong in my head. She tells me what I can't do. She tells me I'm never going to be good enough. And then I'm like, oh, shit, now I got to talk to her. I've already rehearsed all this scary shit. And then I got to talk to her. Well, I've already beat myself up a bunch. Now I get on the phone. Mm -hmm. It's all me. And we all do this to varying degrees. Every one of us do this. I'm just highly aware of it. <laughs> as, coaches highly aware. as coaches, we are. As coaches, we are. Yeah, I'm highly aware of how I get in my own way. And there's some, still some blind spots. That's why I still have a coach. Yep. But the one thing that I have found more than anything is when I surrender to a coach, when I surrender to a mentor, when I surrender to somebody who knows and who has the results that I'm looking for, my life changes. And if it doesn't, it's either because I'm still following my advice or that mentor or that coach didn't have what I needed. And that happens sometimes. I've had coaches that didn't exactly have what I needed. I got other things from them, but I did not get the answer. So I got a new coach. And the fact of the matter is, is not everybody is for everybody. But the one thing is for sure is me listening to me is not for me. You can't. And Einstein said this and then everybody else pretends they did. But Einstein said you cannot fix the problem with the same brain who created it. I like that. Which which means we have to get outside help. We have to take action that's different from what action we took before. And so if you've ever been discouraged, that's another emotion, by the way, feeling discouraged. Doubling down on what you did that didn't work is only going to create more discouragement. Feeling inferior. Well, if you keep trying the inferior process that you've already used, you're just going to continue to feel inferior. And doubt, doubt's a huge emotion that causes people to get stuck because they hesitate and they second guess. They know they should take action. And then regret is, not, regret is actually a behavior. But the shame that comes, that creates regret we tell ourselves, man, I should have taken action a long time ago. Well, why do it now? I had the chance six months ago. I had the chance a year ago. I should have done it then. We beat ourselves up with regret. It's like a bat. But all we have to do is make today the day that we decide to make a change. And the change is simple. Surrender to a new point of view. Surrender to new information. And some of it might sound exactly the same, but these people that I was talking about, the group that's grinding it out, trying to do it the same over and over and over, they're following the same steps as the other people. But these guys are doing it on their own. These guys have surrendered and doing it with someone else. And a lot of times, these people who are doing it with somebody else it's not somebody else, it's something else, and it's a power greater than themselves. Sometimes it can be the group, sometimes it can be one individual, but it surely isn't their, their own ego making them do it. 
we got to remove the ego. When I talk about getting the trash off the track, I'm talking about getting your ego out of the way. Getting your emotions out of the way, getting the ego out of the way, getting all the scary things out of the way. And just looking at what do we, what do you want? What do you really want? One last question, Terry, because I know you've got to go and thank you. That one yeah. individual who, quote unquote, had the issue with the daughter or, or started with the daughter having the issue. And I don't want anything obviously confidential. Yeah. They took the business from one million to four million. Yeah. If you could encapsulate that system, that that situation in terms of just what was the issue there, that what was the one thing that the individual started to quote unquote work on emotionally that caused the openness and the breakthrough? The very simple thing was identifying the emotion that triggered him to fight back. Okay. Identify feeling embarrassed. Identify when he felt hurt. Identify when he felt discouraged when he felt unappreciated when he felt inferior and instead of acting on it to try to prove he's more of those or powerless frightened all of those those are all emotions by the way when we identify the emotion we don't have to act on it if we don't identify it we take action on it to try to prove that we're not well, i'm not embarrassed i'll show you how great i am well, that's a problem. If you're trying to show everybody how great you are when you're feeling like you're not. If you're feeling discouraged and you don't admit it, you're going to start discouraging everyone. Oh, I tried that. It didn't work. You can't do that. Nobody can do that. You can't grow a business like that. It doesn't work. And you start discouraging everyone else. And then you bring everybody down and you push them away. Untrusting. Well, if I'm untrusting, I'll push you away. I'll be suspicious that you're trying something. What are you trying? <laughs> trying to get away from me. And so when we identify our emotions, we don't have to react to them. Right. And what everybody tends to do is they end up living in their emotion, reacting to the emotion. And the biggest reaction that we all have, because, well, everybody says to do it, is go yep. learn about how to control your emotions. I have never seen somebody control emotions. I've never seen somebody control clouds and they're exactly the same. They're an experience. You look up the clouds you look in for you. But what everybody wants to try to do, they want to control yourself. You can't control yourself. Right. Look at a baby having a temper tantrum. Oh, control yourself, baby. That doesn't happen. <laughs> can't happen. Well, what we're doing when we're adults is having a temper tantrum. It's just we modified our behavior to make it look better, but it's yeah. the same tantrum. It's the same explosion of stuff in our head. We're just and not so in the whether, <laughs> Yeah. Whether it's terrifying because our business isn't going the right way or because maybe it is. Oh, shit. We have a tantrum real quick and blow it. Either way. And then we go right back to normal. What's normal? Whatever I find acceptable. Sure. Whatever's comfortable. Exactly. So this is the way it always is. No, it's yep. not. It's the way you create it to be. Generator coaching is all about the fact that your life is exactly the way you generated it. So how do you want to generate your life? Take radical responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Stephanie, any questions or comments before we let Terry go? And again, Terry, thank you for jumping in and doing this for us on short notice. Yeah. No. Um. Well, just you know, Terry, your information is always on point, and I, I really, um, I took a lot of notes. So now I just have to like get my mind together. I think for me, it's um, every time I'm about to get a coach or something like that, I get a little bit nervous about the pricing because I know I'm like a, a good student, and I, well. I, that's what I'm afraid of, like invest the investment and then not having that like change that I want. I've been there, but let yeah. me ask you this. And this is a bold statement on my side of things, especially since, well, it's less bold because you already said it, but you're worried about the investment and not getting the change. But have you ever worked with me? No, I haven't. I, you know, and has my admit. Has my, as you said before, my information is always on point. Have you ever yeah. actually stepped into it? 
And like and you so, said, uh, change is uncomfortable, right? Oh, no, wait, you get changed when you're uncomfortable. And I feel like you always kind of make me uncomfortable. <laughs> I know I do. In a good way. I absolutely know it. And you know what? You're not the only one. I make a lot of people uncomfortable. Absolutely. It's the, our funny job thing is, the funny thing is, is you're very comfortable with me. You're not comfortable with the idea of doing what I suggest. Yeah. And thing. when you can step back and go, wait a minute, that's true. I never really thought about that. You're comfortable with me. That's fine. But when you think about doing some of the things that I suggest or doing some of the things I push into you, oh, he's going to make yeah. me. I don't make you. I encourage you to want to. I, and I then at like some that's, point, you do. That's Carrie, the blockage Carrie. that I have. I have resistance. So like whenever someone tells me to do something, I resist. And I'm like, like I have to have that, like break that wall in order for me to move forward so but, uh, i put my link in the chat you can grab it terry uh, can i just jump in with a little bit of coaching just for steph there yeah sure steph a lot of people make decisions and then they're worried about whether the decision was good or not correct correct what do you do to make sure the decision was good to terry's point the actions and the implementation you're making after the decision will turn, make it turn out to be a good decision yeah, what I say, yeah. uh, it's a very simple, funny statement is make the decision, then make it right. Exactly. Very good, Terry. I like that one. Very good. I like That's that really one. Good. Yeah, so you, I put my link in the chat. Make an appointment. Let's talk. Yeah, you know. I would, yeah. You I know. recommend it, Steph. Reach out, re reach out and book a call with Terry very much. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Okay. Thank you, Terry. As always, pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. We'll see you guys next time.